from social media to healthcare, from e-commerce to online banking. Billions of people worldwide use web and mobile application for almost everything. These apps are convenient and help us with our day-to-day -day life, offering seamless user experiences. How are these apps developed to provide such reliability? Part of the credit goes to the widely used JavaScript framework like Angular, making it easy to create robust apps. Hello and welcome to the comprehensive guide to modern day Angular course on YouTube. My name is Raj and I'm your instructor throughout this course. I'm going to teach you from basics of framework to building simple but quite interesting apps where I'm going to cover brief and deep topics in Angular from this video and upcoming video series. The video is going to be uploaded in this channel regularly. We are building a many apps during this series along with the deployment to the Vercel.com service. We are building one app in each video that are cover main topics. And if you have any query, just post in the comment section and I'll try my best to answer your query as soon as possible. So let's get to know Angular better. And one more important thing, the app we are building during this video series, all source code file link is also provided in the video description. And there is one thing I have to mention is that for getting this type of video, please subscribe to my channel that will really motivate me to bring this type of video series. So let's build a positive community of programmers. So starting with the first question, what is Angular? Angular is an open source JavaScript framework that is based on TypeScript and it is created and maintained by Google. And its primary purpose is to develop a single page application. It enables user to create large application in a maintainable manner. The question arise here is why do we need a framework at all? Why do we, why not we manage all the code assets on our own? The answer is maintainability and consistency of the code. Framework provide a consistent structure so that developers don't have to keep rebuilding code from scratch. The next question you like to ask is that what is SPA or a single page application and why Angular at all? Uh, answering your first question, single page application is that whenever you open any website, whenever user request any page to view, instead of reloading the whole web page, we only send a request to the server instead of loading whole web page we send a request to the server the web page that we only need during the application and loading only the required part like you see in the diagram so addressing to next question why angular instead of any other framework like react or Vue? so according to the stack workflow developer survey 2022 Angular is one of the top four framework widely accepted and used by the developer community and one of the top three framework that are used by professional developer. The second reason of using Angular is that Angular provide all the common things like routing, state management and inside the box. In the world of React or Vue.js, we have to install third party libraries to support routing state management. 
for example redux one more thing is to consider when learning angular it follow the mvc pattern mvc is basically just a programming practice that is how we write a code and it follow by the most of the modern day framework like laravel dotnet etc as you can see in the diagram we have model it consists of the all the data related control or logics second we have view control all the ui layer of application and finally we have a controller where we write our business logic inside it as you can see view is related to the user and the controller is related to the server logic moving on i assume you heard that if you need to create an app in a angular you need to have a knowledge of typescript and you say that i don't have a working knowledge of typescript before but most of the time you don't have knowledge of typescript for working in angular if you follow along with me and build a 3 to 4 project with me over a time you are able to adapt typescript feature if you know the javascript let's get a little tiny introduction to typescript TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. That means everything that you do with the JavaScript, you can create the same with the TypeScript, but plus plus more. And in the world of Angular, we meet a whole bunch of confusing world like modules, components, services, pipes, directives, dependency injections, observables, etc. etc. We will, of course, taking a brief introduction to them to the real world example by building a apps. But believe me, if you follow along with me, and build at least two to three project along with me, you will no longer have difficulty to understand the topic. Angular built with the whole bunch of modules. For example, let's imagine a scenario where we need to take a user input via form. For that, we have a reactive form module. In Angular, we want to call any external service like API. We have a HTTP module for that. We do not have to install any third party like call a related module of the Angular and you are good to go. Who forgot the Angular CLI? The command line interface for Angular. Whenever we need to create any component, any modules or any files, we are writing a code in Angular CLI. Angular CLI not just install a package for you, but also create some of the default component templates. For getting started with the Angular, we need to install some of the software. The first software is to Node.js. So visit to the Node.js.org and install latest version of Node.js. After installing latest version of Node.js for your system, just type this command for checking if the Node.js is successfully installed or not. Type Node-V. So as you can see, I am currently running a Node.js version 16. And second thing is to install a Angular CLI. Let's type this command npm install minus g at Angular plus CLI. I have already installed the Angular CLI into my system. So I'm going to skip this. But you have to install this. You have to run this command after that uh, throughout this series i am using the visual studio code editor but you but you are feel free to use uh, any of your favorite text editor like atom or sublime text editor we need to install a vs code extension called angular language service by angular just open to the visual studio code after opening a visual studio code click on this icon click on this setting icon manage Click on extensions and in here you need to search for Angular language service by Angular. So I am already installed this. I am already installed this. It will provide a code suggestion throughout our application. As you can see, you can read the documentation from here. Getting started with the Angular. Let's create our first application. The first step is to create application. For that, we have to run this command on the terminal. So open the terminal and type ng new 
application name. Whenever you create Angular app using an Angular CLI, Google asking for a set of privacy policy. We say no for now. And the second question asked in the terminal is, would you like to add a Angular routing? Angular routing is a brief topic. We are uh, going to cover. To, we are going to cover it in the upcoming videos. For now, just enter no. And uh, the next question is asked: What kind of uh, CSS format we going to use inside our app? And it will installing a package. After all the process get completed, we will receive this successful message. We will get this folder. And you can see all the default file generated by Angular CLI. So the next step we are going to do is to jump to this folder. So for that, so we are currently inside a to-do folder. As you can see here, uh, if you if we are uh, if we are to quick dr command here, you can see a, all the file. We are fetching here and the next command to run application and next command is to start application is ng serve minus o so let's do so let's type this command and wait command to execute success and uh, wait till the command is executing and uh, the command is successfully compiled and uh, you can see the welcome screen angular app welcome screen uh, let's open this folder let's open this folder inside visual studio open the visual studio code and drag and drop a folder inside it and as you can see our uh, angular application folder is open inside the visual studio so let's get a quick introduction to the folder structure of angular so as you can see we have a angular folder structure so every angular app have a two most important file that is a json file first one is a package json involve all the packages dependency that are at least required to run our initial application surely we can add uh, extra packages over the time by command line or with the angular cli the second file is angular.json it is a project specific configuration default file and we also have a node underscore module folder it will contain all the dependencies all the plugins main part of the angular application folder is under the src source it will contain files like index html the index html is the only thing that we have need to look is for the app root folder as you can see whenever we open this index.html file we will see this weird structure like app dash root app dash root tag then we will have an asset folder asset folder contain all the project specific assets then we have style.css global style sheet that means it affect all the entire web page of the app surely you can add a each component specific css styles but this files affect the main index file of the app then we'll have an environment folder and the important is app folder point of our application it will contain combination of five files angular is all about the component this app is a one another separate component each uh, component have its own template file that means html file it have a main class file that is a logical part file it will have main spec file that is a testing file We'll have a app component CSS file. This is a component specific style sheet file. 
then we'll have a app component.html file this is a component template file we write all the view related logic inside here we'll have a component.spec file this is a testing file we are not currently require this file and uh, second we have the component.ts file so let's take a look a important file inside the app folder that is a component.ts file where we write all our component specific logic inside this file so first thing we have a import where we uh, provide all the list of import all dependency thing we are imported here then we have this thing at component this is called as a decorator and inside here we'll have a selector this is a selector for other app to import that means so whenever we define this selector app dash root as you can see inside our dot class file we'll have a selector if you can see this app dot uh, index dot html file will have this selector app dash root so this is a selector name app root that is provided inside here the app selector then second we have template url this is a component html template url and we'll have a style url this is a css style related url and we'll have this main export class we'll have this main class that is called as app component and uh, inside here we write all the logic related our component where we declare all the variables classes etc so let's try to make a modification inside our application so open this app folder inside here uh, where we need to write all the logic that file name is app.component.ts as you can see our uh, already defined title of the application to do so let's see how we can uh, define one variable so let's define a variable uh, so we are uh, writing similar to the javascript syntax uh, we are currently not using any typescript syntax so let's define this name variable just copy this name variable and uh, inside the template file that means where we are going to uh, display the main template thing so so let's display this name inside uh, next step inside this to do so let's copy this search inside here so let's see let's define one heading hello my name is and the variable name that we are just defined here so and save it Just, uh, so this application is automatically reloaded by live server so as you can see we define this hello my name is and after that our variable name so this kind of weird syntax is called as interpolation we will take a look in a uh, separate video in this video we are going to create one to do app where user is going to add any app to do click on to the add button and this to do is going to add here and we also have a facility to delete this to do so we already built this front end part so as you can see we already have this front end this index and the style sheet of this file so we also need to include bootstrap and a font awesome inside our application including any third party packages we need to run some command visit to the bootstrap.com here so you will get this command npm we 
we will just uh, install the npm npm is basically a package manager for angular and other library and framework like react and view so let's let's copy this command. so on the first terminal the angular app is currently running so we will open this next terminal so from here just visit to your folder so i mean currently a to do folder so just paste here the command that we just copied so write this command and run this command and we also need to run one more command for installing font awesome so write font awesome npm or npm command so first link that, that is npm js so we will get this command npm i i for install and then the package name that is a font awesome So currently it will installing the bootstrap. Via the command. So let's wait for a while. So currently it is installing a bootstrap version 5.2 so let's wait for a while currently installed the bootstrap in, into our angular application so next thing to install a font also so the command is npm i i for install and the, the package name that in our case is font awesome enter okay this command is getting completed so are we going to embed this bootstrap and the font awesome library that we just installed via the command line so for that just close this app folder and src folder and open this src and open this style.css here you need to provide the path of the a uh, library that we just installed so we uh, we are going to use the css file of the font or awesome at import and are we going to search where this uh, bootstrap library is getting installed for that we already discussed that node module contain all the dependencies all the packages so from here we need to search for a bootstrap so let's search for a bootstrap so as you can see uh, we'll have this bootstrap inside it we'll have the dist folder and inside it we'll have a css folder and we'll have a bootstrap dot css okay so let's define it for that we have a bootstrap folder we'll have a dist folder and we'll have a css folder and we'll have a bootstrap dot css file name and uh, similar way we need to also uh, going to import this font awesome so let's search for the font awesome so we'll find this font awesome so so the similar thing we need to follow is at import and uh, we'll have a font awesome and uh, inside we have a css folder and inside we have a font awesome.css right. save it and uh, for now we'll just have to close this node module folder and uh, open again open this app dot component dot html file select all and delete for now for this application 
Uh, for this video, we are going to create a one simple to do app. So we already designed this. So we already designed this front end for this to do app for getting this similar structure inside our application. So we will need to copy the HTML structure for that. I'm already created this HTML structure. So we are going to copy and paste inside this app dot component dot HTML because this is a main template file and we are going to create and initialize all the tags inside here. So save it and uh, we also have a supporting CSS files, CSS style rules, copy it and uh, we need to paste inside the app.component.css because we do not want this style applied anywhere else outside of this component because if we paste this css style inside this styles.css we will get all the style outside of this component but we do not want this we only want uh, this style reflect inside the same component so save it and uh, whenever we going to refresh this we will get similar thing inside our angular app as you can see so let's start building this so uh, our main logic is whenever user is going to add a new task inside this form where this in input box we are going to take this value and store it inside one array and also we are going to display the value inside this list and also we will have a one delete button for deleting this task getting user input from the form we need to get help from the reactive form that is a angular form module and uh, for getting the form module we need to import it inside our application for importing the extra module we need to open this app.module.ts file and inside here we need to define it so in the uh, angular we'll have a reactive form module for using all kind of form inside our application just copy uh, just initialize this just import this inside the app module ts and copy this import name and uh, just add inside the list of imports so let's say uh, initialize one form so angular uh, have a different uh, syntax so first of all we will have a to do form variable to do form is equal to new form group and uh, for embedding this form inside this application we'll also need to import it we first import this reactive form model and uh, second we'll need to import inside our main uh, class file inside our main logical file that is a form group we'll need this form group second we'll need a form control module and uh, next we'll need a validator validator is a module to validate the form control input as you can see this uh, already imported this form group because we define it here so we uh, just delete it from here or uh, avoiding this repeated so we uh, we will uh, getting user input for that we'll have a input variable and uh, we'll have a form control uh, and the form control have a first initial value as empty we'll provide uh, any uh, default value like value one and uh, next thing we'll go to the next line and uh, we will have a validators 
that we just defined here so validator dot require that means this field is going to be required without uh, entering any value user will not going to proceed further so we'll uh, we are uh, define this form to do frm variable here so we need to assign it we need to bind it so for that need to have a form group and this is a special type of binding syntax provided by angular and we will provide this form group uh, don't worry about this syntax we will take a closer look of upcoming video so we will have this form group and uh, we will define it where this variable will bind this uh, form group in the similar variable and a similar structure we will follow to this just copy this input this input is uh, bind inside the input tag that we are uh, using inside this this input tag and uh, we need to just bind it so for that will have a form control name and uh, provide the name and we'll uh, in our case the name is input that is uh, that we are just defining here the similar thing input and uh, form control name is input form have a default event called as submit so for uh, binding a submit event in, into the form we'll have this special type of syntax the square bracket and the type of the event so in our case the event is submit what kind of uh, function we will run when this submit event get triggered so we will run add to do so we will define it just copy it and as you can see this uh, error get pop up the property to do does not exist because we are not uh, initialized this function so we are going to initialize this function so the error is now gone so after the form submit let's uh, do a quick console log for confirmation that form is submitted ok save it go to your application so as you can see we define this value one as default value like this when you clear this we'll get clear value okay let's open this inspect inspect this application and open the console clear for console now so add this value and we'll get this submitted message as we are running this to do add to do option so remove it for now so currently we are uh, created one form uh, with the new form group and assign this form into this uh, template where this form group special type of syntax and uh, created uh, one submit event and uh, created this add to do function for getting uh, to do values so let's define some variable because uh, we are going to store all the to do value inside one array so let's define to do list name array and it will going to have a default value so it will uh, so it is a special type of angular syntax uh, that uh, that is similar to the like to do is a variable name and uh, this is a type like if we say if you see name of a type string because we are currently using a uh, typescript syntax 
and we'll define it with the null so as you can see we'll have a name variable of a type string and uh, we will define it as a null so similar thing we'll have a to-do list as a array and uh, we will define it with the null array with the null or blank okay similar thing getting the value of this form input we will targeting the form to do form dot value dot the input like uh, the angular uh, cli also suggests the input so let's see how we get this value okay clear the terminal one will get one asd will get asd two three will get one two asd two three we'll also need to reset the form after form submission so for that we'll have a reset function so let's see how this is going to work we'll have a one a so as you can see the form is getting resetted after each value enter and we'll get the recent value inside this terminal so let's remove it for now so first of all we need to check if user is uh, entering any empty value or not so this dot to do form dot value and uh, we are getting the value of input is not equal to null else we'll run a else condition like alerting the user that please enter please enter to the value okay. let's see let's replace this and if we enter add we'll get this message please enter the to do value okay it will work so let's define it what kind of uh, value we need to enter inside the to do list value or also we can call it new to do is equal to we'll have a we need to define a, one id uh, this id will uh, require when we delete a to do so id for that uh, we need to get a id dot now this thing will return a unique id on the each submission of the form we will have a value of the form value of the input so we'll get this similar thing uh, like how we are comparing inside this just copy it so we're getting this and uh, we also have a uh, is complete status and initially initially it will uh, assign to us false because whenever user enter any to do it will get always get first false and when uh, user delete the to do will uh, set it to the true and uh, also we have a date or uh, displaying the date it is a it's kind of metadata thing date and as you can see angular cli is automatically uh, auto completed this so we will design the structure of the to do value array so whenever a user uh, submit the form we need to update to the to do so this dot to do We need to push inside the to do so push is a javascript method that is going to use that is used to push a new element inside the array so 
initially it will show us an error that is as you can see we'll have a const new we'll have a structure of this argument of type id will number value is string and uh, string or null or undefined this complete is boolean and date is string so is uh, it's not assigned to the parameter of type neighbor for avoiding this type of error we need to have a one definition of this new to do item we need to define one definition of new to do item for that we need to create one interface interface we have a ng generate interface and interface name is to do so the to do interface is getting is get created so let's define this to do interface so as you can see we need to define the structure of this so just copy it paste here so it is a number so first id is number then value is a string is complete is a boolean and date is a string save it and uh, we need to uh, for using uh, this interface we need to import it so for importing uh, right import to do and angular cli will suggest autocomplete and uh, we will copy this and assign inside and assign this thing inside the to do list array to assign inside this new to do uh, we also get this a uh, undefined type syntax so for uh, providing this error we need to provide this value as any any kind of data type that will uh, allow all kind of data to be entered so for avoiding the error we will use uh, any okay so let's test the application so as you can see this array is getting displayed on the console so in the first array we'll have a date value we'll have a id and uh, id is going to be unique each time whenever the form gets submitted so we have a, a complete value as a false and a value is a task one and similarly the value is a task two on the array object uh, array number two so uh, we will receive uh, all the value inside the to do task list to do list so we need to display this thing in uh, into the front end for that open the app.component.html and we will need to have uh, one uh, looping mechanism to loop all the values so angular will provide one looping mechanism that is a uh, for loop so let's look how we can loop this thing so we will have the value stored inside this to do list array so we will display this thing inside this div so for that uh, uh, for looping it for you uh, looping uh, it. so for that we need to type ng for it's kind of a uh, very uh, weird syntax let item item or to do of as a to do of item list so it's kind of a uh, angular way to use a for loop so we will define it to do of the task list so all the thing is stored inside this to do so 
will first see where uh, where the task value is getting show so from here this value is getting show so we already see that uh, whenever we need to uh, display whenever we need to display any variable inside the template or uh, html we need to use the special type of syntax that is a two curly braces open and close and uh, we'll uh, need to target it so we will define it as a to do variable and uh, we will have to uh, initialize to do dot value because it is shown inside this to do and will have a value this to do variable this uh, this to do variable initialize here inside the or and uh, inside we have a value and similar thing is goes to here and uh, also we need to display a date value so we will have a similar thing two curly braces opening and close and uh, we'll have a to do dot date the date variable that is we are getting inside it just getting inside the data variable that we are getting inside and uh, save it let's see so we can see we initially not have any values here we'll have one value we'll have a two value we'll have a third value we'll have a fourth value and uh, also we got this array next and second thing is remain is to delete this to do deleting to do we need to target this logo and uh, apply a on click event listener inside this logo so we'll see where this logo is placed. so we can see where is the logo so for that we'll have a uh, we need to listen to the on click event so uh, we will use angular syntax click tell to do and uh, for deleting a specific to do we'll need to target a id so for that to do to do dot id and uh, copy this function go outside this add to do put some space and uh, we will get this id as a number uh, this is a id as a number and uh, this is a type script format so we will assign the value to the task list the filter value so uh, in the javascript we have a filter function to filter through the array and we will be using this or uh, deleting the to do to do list will uh, filtering the to do list array to do list this dot to do list is equal to this dot to do list dot filter and uh, filter we have an item this is a filter uh, simple uh, this is a filter syntax filter uh, function syntax so item dot id is not equal to id this item this item dot id id means this id the parameter that we are uh, getting uh, into the function and is not equal to the id id is a this id is not equal to the id so it will filter through the thing and uh, let's console it the updated to-do list array let's see
let's add some new uh, item to array we will have this new item uh, so let's delete this so as you can see we'll have a five uh, element in the array so we'll delete this first we will get these four elements in this array and also the list getting updated we'll delete second and we currently have two elements inside there and uh, we'll see these two elements the four and six stored inside the array so this is a basic introductory application we are taken in this first video of the getting started with the angular guide so we will remain with the last step is to deploy this application into the virtual service for deploying this application to the virtual first of all we need to uh, put this application into the github so you will also get one intro introduction to github how we can uh, put uh, our source code into the github so let's provide a repository name so we will provide this name to the repository make it public and create repository. Let's copy this code. Using this GitHub, you need to install one Git client and uh, visit to this your to do app folder and right click here. After you installing the Git bash here, you need to have this. Uh, Git bash is basically one software that is. You, uh, that we that is used to use git services so right click here open a git bash it will open a git bash so again copy these commands right click paste and enter it will initializing and uh, committing this the initial commit to the github till then uh, we need to open the version so if you uh, already not have any account on the version so create one account with the version and uh, after that you need to open this new project So as you can see, I already have a uh, some practice project created. So let's see the status here, uh, on Git status here. So that Git status command will be used to. We need to add the files. It will adding the file Git commit committing the file and git push command will push all the code inside the github and this will push all the code so let's refresh here inside github as you can see we will get all the code here so the github uh, part is done uh, then we need to move to the version click on the new project we need to click on this drop down uh, just below this import git repository and uh, just select this add github account this will open one browser window pop up uh, we will uh, you can also provide all repository access but uh, but uh, I prefer this only selected repository just select here and uh, this thing angular getting started to do uh, the repository that we just created is displayed here so select this and scroll down and install this will install it and uh, if asked for the password just enter your password and this will again redirect you to here 
click this getting started to do import and you will see some uh, configuration project configuration thing and uh, you do not have to uh, make any changes inside it just click on the deploy and it will take some time and uh, getting started deployment here so as you can see this all the block thing create a, a deployed url for your application and uh, you will also uh, get to know this url is getting updated inside your repository this about thing just wait for a while for complete this process and here we go you will successfully deployed your application to the virtual services and uh, if you click on this you will get this url list this application task one task three so as you can see i'm getting this task to be displayed here and uh, if i delete this task two it will also get deleted and uh, if you refresh here inside your github account you will get this a link url updated dynamically here you will also get this environment as click to the one production and it will active stage it is a it is on the active stage so this is it for this video tutorial guys more angular video is coming soon uh, where we discuss all the detail angular topics all detailed angular terms and we will also build a lot of apps during this upcoming video series so stay tuned until then goodbye